Welcome to the Tech Table. In the 4.1 update video you're about to see, I'm going to show you what's new for AVC HD users working with DVDs and VOB files directly on disk. How about new workflows for Avid users that want to make full use of the production premium? You can now take your Avid projects and Avid files and bring them in and bring them out to go right back to your Avid. How about new red workflows for working with red raw files and source settings? We've got easier ways to export to frame and even projects that load faster. Let's jump to it and take a look. Let's go ahead and launch Premiere Pro 4.1. One of the most requested features for Premiere Pro 4.1 was the addition of new AVCHD presets. Let's take a look and see what we've added. I'll start with just creating a new project and adding it to my desktop. And as you'll see here, we have the existing 1080i presets that you've already got in your current version of Premiere. But with Premiere 4.1, we've added not only 1080p, but also 720p modes. And I'll just flip these open so you can get a chance to see what's inside there. I'll just go ahead and start a 720p24 project, since that's one I've gotten a lot of emails on. Okay, I'm going to jump over to my AVC Cam 150 folder, and inside this folder are a bunch of different frame rates, which I shot with the brand new Panasonic HMC 150p camera. This has been a great camera because it offers all sorts of different frame sizes and frame rates. Now if you're not familiar with how Adobe Premiere Pro works with AVC HD files, you can simply read the files directly off your media card or you can copy the private folder directly to your computer. I would suggest putting this in another folder as I've done here. And you can access those clips directly through the media browser. And again, this is the recommended way to work with AVC HD files. Always use the media browser. Click on the private folder and all of your files should be listed here. I'm going to go down towards the bottom of this particular uh, card that's in here because I happen to know these are where my 24p files are. I'm going to double click on this particular 62 file. And you'll watch it load up here in the source bin. I can go ahead and hit play. And one of the new things about 4.1 is better AVC HD playback on slower computers. I did want to take the time for a second and show people what type of computer I'm using today. Uh, it's just a 2.9 Intel Core Duo, so it's not an 8-core machine. Um, it does have 8 gigs of RAM, which is great for running uh, the full production premium workflow. But again, you could get along with 4 gigs of RAM working with AVC HD just fine. It's just when you're using multiple applications when you want to have lots of RAM. And again, this is true for the Windows users as well. I'm primarily using Mac OS for this demonstration because of the screen capture program that I use. But again, the performance is the same on Windows. So at this point, you can go ahead and just set your in and your out point. And then just drag this directly down to the timeline. I'll go ahead and zoom this sequence to fit. And then you can see that the playback of both of these uh, files looks great. So again, working with AVC HD files on an Intel Core Duo in Premiere 4.1 is, uh, is a much smoother experience. And I'll just let this play out for just a second so you can see it switch over to the next clip. Now the one thing you want to uh, make sure you're doing on slower computers is you want to make sure that you've got your playback mode set to automatic quality. Since we're working with different types of formats, sometimes you want to try to figure out what the frame rate is or the screen size of the file that's on your AVC HD card. A couple quick ways to do this. I'm going to double click on this first card here and load that up. To see what size this is, just right mouse click on the source window and go to properties. When the property window comes up, you'll see that this particular clip is 1920 1080 shot at 2997. And if I skip a little bit down, about halfway down through my card, I'll go ahead and load up another clip here. Go to properties. And you'll see that I'm at 720 at uh, basically 2997 or 60. 
And again, if I skip further down, like on the horse clip that you saw here, and I go to properties, you'll see that I'm basically at 24 frames per second and a 720 clip. Now, why is this important? Well, if I needed to start a new sequence, so I'll go ahead and start a new sequence, and I wanted an AVCHD uh, file at 1080i, for example, then I would say 1080i60. Why is this important? Well, if you happen to drag a clip, let me go back up here to the top. I'll go ahead and drag this number one clip out here, which I already know is 1920 1080 at 2997. You'll notice that it redlines here. The reason it's redlining is because the frame size is off. Remember, this is a 720p sequence. And it's, we already know it's 1920, 1080, plus it's 2997, not 24, as these clips are here. So if I delete this clip here, bring up this new sequence that I just added, and then drag and drop this in here, it should not redline. That's how I know the sequence matches the clip. So again, if you're, if you're working with clips and you get a red line and you're not sure why you're getting a red line, just right mouse click on the clip go to properties and then take a look and see what the frame size is and then you automatically know you need to match your sequence to your frame size just a quick tip because i get a lot of questions on that as well another great feature that we've added to premiere 4.1 is the ability to read vob files directly off of the dvd and for those of you that aren't familiar with that let me give you a quick explanation I'm going to move up here to where my volumes are mounted. I happen to have my DVD listed here. I'm going to minimize Premiere and show you that I've got a DVD here on my desktop. So it's just a standard DVD. If I double click on it, there's the video TS folder and all the apparent files which go with it. And there's a lot of different information in here. One of the new things in Premiere Pro is the ability to click on a DVD not have to transfer it to your hard drive, at least not the whole DVD. If all you need is one or two clips from your DVD that you want to use in another project, this is really easy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just double click on the Video TS folder. And I'll see all of the VOB files listed here. You can double click on any of the VOB files so long as they don't end in zero. I'm going to go ahead and double click on number four here and I'll see my DVD just pop right up. Now at this point, I can just go ahead and hit play. And you'll notice that that video plays fine. Again, it's playing directly off of the DVD. This is a very interesting concept because it now allows us to use the DVD pretty much the same as I would any other hard drive or memory card. And you'll see I can even scrub the DVD. <laughs> This is an excellent way to work with archived material where I only have a DVD as a backup. So let me give you a couple of other pointers that I use. I'm going to go ahead and create a new sequence. I happen to know that this is a 4x3 project. I typically use DVC Pro 50 for my SD projects. And it's a standard screen. So I'll go ahead and just call this Nigel Hook DVD. And I'm going to go ahead and set an endpoint, and I'll set an out point, and then just drag it directly down to the timeline. And at this point, I can just go ahead and play that directly out. Now, if you're curious about performance, I can do a number of different things. Let me show you some other things that you can do with this. Let me delete this clip. 